All right, thank you for joining us on another episode of The Movie Show. This week we're going to be uh, reviewing The Inconvenient Sequel, which is the sequel to the 2006 film Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore. So we just went and saw this in the theaters. It's in select theaters now, and probably by the time you're watching this, it'll be in more places, I, I hope. Um, so, guys, before we reveal the uh, spoiler that the world is ending... Oh. Oh, Zach, no. what were you Sorry. thinking? Oh, man, uh, so I'm be- gonna have to t- duct tape your mouth. <laughs> Before we reveal that, um, what uh, what would you guys tell people if they're just looking for a quick, you know, before the spoilers, uh, you know, about the movie? What, what, what are your thoughts? If you're going for the information and you haven't seen the first one, go see the first one because I think that one has a lot more of the, you know, the science behind climate change uh, than this one. Uh, and if you have seen it, then like it's a good movie to watch. I think it's. Uh, a good way to to revamp, you know, the the issue and make you more motivated to solve it. Mm-hmm. I yeah. like that. I yeah, think that's, that's a good summary. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, we are going to give away a lot of the film. So if you don't want that, go watch the film first. But if you don't mind, uh, we're going to talk about some things that we saw in the film. Yeah. Cool. Um, so Here we go. I teared up at a few points in the film. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Did anyone else tear up? Yeah, I did tear up. Really? I okay. teared up. Uh, Nick quite a few times, actually. So Nick is just a cold-hearted bastard. <laughs> yeah, Nick. Um, well, I got sad. I just it didn't. My eyes weren't connected. I guess. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> one of the places I teared up was um, when we revealed something that I didn't know. I was surprised that I didn't know it, which was that uh, Lyndon Rive, who's the CEO of Solar City, and Elon Musk, who's CEO of Tesla, uh, they were very involved in the. Um, climate summit in Paris in 2015. Hmm. Um, I guess they were working behind the scenes. People like Al Gore were contacting them, and they played a large role in getting India to sign off on on the climate documents. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I would think that like there would be more press about this, mm-hmm. or that even there, you know, Solar City and and Tesla would want to put out press releases like we're responsible for this awesome document, <laughs> but there was no word of that that right. I heard. So this is the first time I think we got to see a backdoor glimpse at right. kind of how the these things kind of work politically. Uh, India was holding out because India was kind of upset that they weren't allowed to use fossil fuels like the rest of the industrialized world was. Right mm-hmm. for 150 years, we get to burn whatever we wanted, and then we're like, India, don't burn anything. Yeah. Um, and so there's a scene where Al Gore goes to meet with the prime ministers of um, India, mm-hmm. and they're like, you're telling us to use solar and wind, but you got to use fossil fuels, and we want to burn cheap coal like you guys did. All they want is energy. Right, right. right. They, I mean, because like the, the minister said, they have a huge problem where like a third of their country doesn't have access to energy, which is a basic right, and that, you know, solar power just wasn't feasible for their for their costs. Yes. Yeah, and I guess one thing, I, I was kind of like, well, why isn't it? Well, what the, we find out in the movie was that they need to pay a huge um, interest rate to to build new solar, like right. 13%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess because it was seen as risky. Um, and so what, what Al Gore shows him doing, and I don't know how much of this is just Al Gore, but mm-hmm. this is his movie. So Al Gore is on the phone with people like Lyndon Rive, and he's saying like, hey, Lyndon, can you give some technology to India and make this deal happen? And you know, next thing we know, the deal is happening. So, right. um, the so basically, it, Solar City donates a bunch of solar panels. Well, it was well, the, technology the technology behind. The, so he basically them gave them, the I think, more efficient solar panels, yeah. like the technology for that. And then Al Gore also talked to like the one of I think some bank right that was handling the loans to to convince them to lower the interest rate. Mm. Right, right. That's what. It was. So I mean, for me, it was a cool part of the movie was seeing kind of the what Al Gore does in the background that we don't get to see yeah, that he's. Right. You know, going and talking to people all over the world, which is awesome. But he's also he's got connections to the Senate and to presidents, and he can he can make calls and make things happen, um, which is really powerful. So a large part of this movie, I think, is that Al Gore. Remember this: what we're seeing now is 2015. Mm-hmm. A lot of the movie before there's the actual election in the United States, and a lot of people are asking Al Gore in the movie, "Hey, are you running for president?" Yeah, um, and he keeps being like, "No, I'm a recovering politician. I'm not going to do that." Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about Al Gore and this movie and presidency? I mean, how does this all fit in? I think he's going to have a relapse uh, <laughs> on, his, on his political his political addiction um, per se. But so I mean, the to me, the movie seemed like it was a big campaign ad for him. It was very much um, oh look at how awesome Al Gore is, and uh, I wouldn't be that surprised if he made a run for president in twenty twenty. Um, there is like. Uh, like we've talked about the issue of him being old, but it's yeah. So let's talk about his age. So 
He, uh, we looked it up the other day, he's right? 69. He's 69, 69 currently, so he, or 69 or 68 or somewhere around there. Yeah. And so, you know, by the, tw- by the time 2020 rolls around, he'll be about the same age as Donald Trump is uh, currently, I think. So, I guess there's precedent mm-hmm. for, for, <laughs> for that. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you're not, I mean, people have done it before, right? right? They've run at that age, and so yeah. it could be done. I just, I don't know, I, am I the only one feeling like he missed his chance? Yeah. I, well, I, I think, think yeah, I think I mean not just two thousand, but yeah. I'm saying like <laughs> yeah, um, right, yeah. But maybe given the current situation we're in, that people will be more willing to make an extreme jump to the opposite side based on you know how the next four years are going to go. I mean, so this movie might be almost like a chess move. Like right. I'm moving my pawns out to show that I am making a play for presidency. Like, like I'm and still he, here, right. and he might even be like with the adding everything about the political, um, you know, being a recovering politician and everything like that. Might even be a way for him to to show that like, oh, I don't want to be a politician. And when 2020 rolls around, it'll be like, ah, oh, I guess I'll, you know, the world needs me. Yeah. So I guess I'll run for president. Um, so I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too shocked to see something like that. And I think too the thing with his politics is that he shows that he still has it in through the way that he uses his power to get things done. And I think that a lot of that movie is at times it might be a little bit slow and you know redundant and repetitive, but it shows that he really does have the ability to to get things done. So yeah, I think that the, a lot of the politics talk was to. Uh, provide, you know, proof that he still has it. Now, at the beginning of the movie, uh, as we're introing, we see lots of glaciers melting, and we hear um, TV broadcasts, Fox News, saying, you know, uh, this inconvenient truth, the first movie, yeah. is a load of crap, and, you know, it, there's no science behind it, and this is faulty science, faulty science. And I was like, this is great, because he's setting it up so that he can now come in with another a punch and knock that stuff out of the park. Mm-hmm. But I was kind of disappointed. Yeah, I want to hear your take on it with the actual science that was put forth. I felt like there wasn't an updated slideshow here. I was expecting a new, basically better uh, slideshow like we got in the first movie with all new data. And I felt like it, there was some new data, but a lot of it was just new pictures and movies of flooding and hurricanes that weren't, I felt like, a, a one-two punch to knock out the argument. Yeah. What do you guys think? I agree. I think that the the science wasn't really backed as much as the first movie. And there was that one section with Hurricane Sandy where he talked about in the first movie how New York would flood and the 9-11 memorial site would flood. And it did, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. And like you, it got my hopes up. And I was excited for the science that backed that up. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of just moved on to other videos of him talking. Maybe this was more of an emotional movie as opposed to... Exactly. That's what I was about to say. I think... This is meant to be taken as sort of a one-two punch, where it's like, here's our facts in the first movie, and here's now we're going to appeal to your heart. Because uh-huh. clearly the facts haven't been enough to get enough people on board, so maybe we can appeal to your heart and show people are dying around. You're you know, right, because there's that scene. It's in- coming into people's homes now. Yeah. People's lives are being ruined by it. So if we can't appeal to you with just the, the hard numbers of facts, if you don't care about that stuff, and you're just like, oh, whatever, science, but it's a bunch of mumbo-jumbo. It's just seeing, like, the horrible things that are happening now, maybe that's enough to get some people to be like, okay, I don't know about the science, but clearly something's happening here. Yeah. Maybe there's something we can do to help. Because there's that scene early, you're right, in, in the movie where he's in the Senate hearing and mm-hmm. a senator keeps cutting him off, yeah. like asking him a question and then doesn't let him answer. Yeah. And he's like, how can I get through to you? Yeah. And right. then the movie... So, so, that was yeah, a really maybe, good scene. So yes. maybe that's what, yeah, maybe he was just like, okay, I tried the facts, that didn't work. Right, so um, to me it felt like this movie was just a departure from that intentionally in the hopes to get people who are not as easily convinced by numbers and figures. But I agree, I would have, me, I would like to see the numbers and the figures. That stuff works on me, but maybe this movie is not as geared towards me because I'm, it converted. It seemed like this movie was definitely geared toward the other side. Like, you know, they showed that one scene at the end in Georgetown, Texas, right. yeah. with the uh, the conservative Republican mayor mm-hmm. and how he is trying to go solar. And I think that, yeah, it's uh, there was that section in Paris where he was doing the 24-hour broadcast and they had to stop because of one of the Paris attacks that happened and 18 people died or something. And... Uh, it was really emotional and like it was definitely not as much geared towards like here is uh you know the problem that that uh democrats are facing 
it's more of here's the problem that we're all facing together is right. humanity. And we need to all come together no matter who we are because, um, like the mayor said, it's just not, it's common sense to not put stuff into our atmosphere. It's better for us. So to sort of find uh, common ground through everyone, I think, was the goal of this movie. My only question is, are, you know, the right side people going to watch this movie in the first place? Yeah, well, let's ask that question. I mean, so Inconvenient Truth, the hard part, I think, was getting people to watch it. If you yeah. watched it, it was hard to, to, to argue it. Um, are people, we're already converted. We went yeah. and watched this film. Are people who are still deniers going to watch this film? I kind of doubt it just because it's got yeah. the Al Gore stamp the on reputation. it. the reputation. Everyone knows. Yeah. Everyone's heard of it in Inconvenient Truth, whether they've seen it or not. You know? Right, yeah. And everyone knows what it's about. And if you don't believe in that, then what's going to make you yeah. want to see this one? So right. was this a, basically a re-inoculation for the converted to just give them a boost? Because one of the things that Al Gore's been doing over the past 10 years, right, is he's been going around and, and giving... Uh, talks and training seminars to people mm -hmm. and then at the end of the movie he showed how many of his his followers or mm -hmm. his people he's trained have gone on to enter politics and, and start making yeah. a change themselves so was this kind of like to reinvigorate the base kind of thing? I, I, think I think so, so was, definitely yeah. but like you said yesterday zach i think one of the problems with this movie is that it doesn't really give you the tools to be one of those people yourself it just shows you what those people are doing rather than telling you what it is that we as the common people need to do well, to promote this cause so there was a little bit at the end and i think this was like it seemed like a, a lot of afterthought yeah. but there was that last screen where it was basically you know the slideshow of images or like it was it was a compilation of videos essentially um and then there was some text on the screen that was like you can you know you can change and then it's it basically like had a bunch of rotating words in what in the same thing be inconvenient right hashtag that. be inconvenient and it's like oh convince your school to go 100 uh, percent renewable convince and then like a, all of a list of different things that can go renewable. And so that was kind of... So it seemed like that part was a call to action yeah. for the people watching. And it just seemed like it was an afterthought. I, I right? want to tie this it into like you that. know our interview with Delaney Reynolds. So uh, if you haven't seen that interview yet, please go watch it. it. She is amazing and inspirational. And I think that she is kind of one of these um, people who's learned from Al Gore's speeches and, and seminars and gone off and done something with it. I think the rest of us, most of us, the problem we have is we leave a movie like this and even if we're feeling a little invigorated from the end, like, oh, good things are happening in, in Texas, we're kind of like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do yeah. mm -hmm. other than maybe if, you know, put some solar on my roof or something. But, like, in terms of how am I supposed to get my town to do anything? It's right. one thing to tell you on a screen, like, tell your town to do this, tell your school to do this. But a lot of people haven't been trained, so they're like, okay, here's what I've seen. I've seen a lot of students who really mean well. They meet in their environmental studies group or whatever, and they're like, let's get our school to put solar on the roof. And they go to see the principal, and they're like, put solar on the roof. And then they think they're done. And I think we need some training to let them know that's a great first step, awesome, but it's going to take 400 more steps. Yeah, and it's right. going to take three more years, and it's going to take a lot of fighting to get that solar on the roof. Um, and that's the part where I feel like we've let our students down because we've just told them, Go do something, you know, and, and then, then that's the accomplishment. And yeah, that's just so just trying too. is the accomplishment. Right. That's like well, you can see that with everything in schools yeah, right. nowadays. It's like you're, you, good job, <laughs> right. you right. tried. It's like oh, you did the first step, right? That's and it's, it. And it's not their fault. They haven't been trained. Uh, they haven't learned the history of how hard these things are. He did point out. Al Gore pointed out in the movie how it's a constant struggle between hope and despair. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. He's constantly. Like feeling good, there's a hopeful moment, and then despair that it's been crushed. That was a big theme in the movie: is pushing through the the uh, despair and the adversities that come with you know supporting something that a lot of people don't believe in. Right. right. And I think that that was a very important you know thing to to take out of the movie is that even when you feel you know let down or like discouraged, you have to keep trying. You have right. to keep finding new ways to to inspire other people and convince other people that this is a real problem and i think that i think yeah like you said the, the, a lot of the problem is that we don't give people the tools i certainly don't know the tools my town isn't solar there's no houses that are solar in my town and it's like i would really like appreciate it if someone could teach me how to go about convincing my town to go solar rather than just a text on screen that just says convince your town to go solar well, and, and i want to point out you've worked in solar industry for a while. i have you yeah. worked for solar city 
And you know how hard it is to go door to door and tell people like all the benefits of solar and right. have them slam the door in your face. Especially in a more conservative town. It's really tough. And, you know, it's, I still didn't know what to do. I feel like it almost would have been more powerful to go straight to the top and speak to maybe the mayor or the town hall or go to a, a council meeting or something. But, but if, if most of the members of that town aren't putting solar on the roof, then the mayor looks around and goes, I think I'm pretty safe here not putting solar on the roof. Right. I think the real, I, the interesting thing was like with the Georgetown in, in Texas, right? It was the, um, from what I remember, it was that it was financially it made sense to, um, to put in solar and do renewable stuff because mm -hmm. it was cheaper, right? And so if you can just convince, like every town wants to save money. Right. Every person wants to save money. And so if you give them, if you say, okay, you want to save money? Here, double win, right? You save money and you save the planet a little bit. But you don't even have to think about the saving the right. planet. Just, just like, the money. Just like, here's some money. Just people like, are very skeptical of that, which is surprising that in today's day and age, all the science, we have to back it up, that people are still skeptical. Well, but it's almost too good to be true for a lot well, of people. I mean, they played some, some Trump clips where right. Trump was like, oh, well, solar panels, they disintegrate in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Stuff that's just so wildly false yeah. that it, I mean, it's gotten to the point now where I think it's easy to beat these arguments because their arguments are just flailing arguments. Yeah. Um, they're, they're no longer make any sense. I mean, the fact that solar panels are so cheap, all you have to do is go on the internet, look them up. Wow. And it's like, yeah. they're 50 cents a watt. And the truth will come out eventually. I think like over time, people will start to realize like just before this, we were putting a uh, image in one of our videos that we we're editing of a uh, Tesla solar roof. And we were we couldn't put tell. the video in because it didn't look like a solar roof. Right, right. So we were, we were trying to show solar panels, and uh, the new Tesla roof doesn't look like there's solar on your roof. Right. So which, I think that eventually people will see this and be like, "Oh, maybe this is better." Because that was the biggest uh, catch for people was, "Oh, I don't want it to make my house look ugly." Right. And I think that you know eventually, like Al Gore said in the movie, the truth is going to come out, and people are going to start realizing that this is the better way to do things because it's what happened with the women's rights movement. It's what happened with. Uh, the civil rights movement, all these movements, uh, gay rights, they just eventually hit this tipping point where the truth comes out and it just pours out. Everybody starts like seeing, oh, okay, this is clearly what's right. Yeah, I, I guess I'm worried that, you know, what's going to, I feel like what's going to happen is it, we're going to need some gigantic storm that's going to wipe out way too much to actually convince people that this is a problem. And, I Which mean, is sad. <laughs> you, you would think that Hurricane Sandy, for instance, would be a wake-up call for the East Coast people, who we don't normally get that kind of storm. Um, the fact that it went right into New York, right. dumped all that water, and destroyed so many Literally houses. flooded the 9-11 memorial. Yeah, and, and right. destroyed houses that, and houses and you know, whole neighborhoods. Um, I, we are very short-minded people. I think yeah. a lot of people have already forgotten about that if they weren't directly affected by right. it. But right. we need to connect the dots. We need to look at the different storms. Well, that was a big po point in the movie was that there's a storm here, there's a storm here, there's a storm here, and people are like, that's just a storm. We're too small to notice these things. And the other thing that we were actually talking about on the ride home yesterday after seeing the movie, was, which was interesting to me, was there was a clip in the movie um, where they showed the atmosphere of the Earth mm -hmm. and how small it is, how thin of a layer that is. And we were talking about how the atmosphere isn't as high as the ocean is deep. And even the ocean, if you could shrink the earth to the size of like a tennis ball, you would not feel the water. Your fingers wouldn't even get wet right. because that's how small the earth's crust is. So the fact that we think the planet's so big, that there's so much surface dumping, area. You know, dumping stuff into the atmosphere like it's our... our like it's our open sewer. Right. But it's actually the smallest portion on the earth like the surface of the earth is way less volume and area than the planet itself mm -hmm. so we think that it's this huge planet but really it's just a small portion of the planet when, when it's Al more fragile than we when think. al gore is talking to the ministers in india and they're like you know why should we listen to you about you know burning fossil fuels i thought he had a great comeback argument which was have you did you see the sun today in the sky mm -hmm. and then they cut to a scene of india fan up to the small. sky and yeah. there's no there's no there's sun no sky. yeah i mean yeah. I, we cover the latest uh, sustainable news here on this channel. I didn't know that there's two cities in Texas that are 100% renewable energy. I know, good for that them. That's really cool. That, I mean, that's, I think they don't want, the media doesn't want you to know that because if in Texas they're doing it, mm -hmm. that means A, it can be done anywhere, mm -hmm. and B, the political will is there for, I mean, for Texas. Mm -hmm. I know. Then, right? we, I mean, there's nothing stopping us now. They have so much more solar, probably two times, three times the solar radiance that we get here. So it means that 
total no-brainer for them to have but solar. But they don't have as many, uh, it's not as common to have solar panels down there. Exactly, right, which is the whole disconnect. And that's right. why it was so powerful to see Al Gore with that Republican mayor. They're getting along just fine. They both agree on this issue, and it's like, they're both like, no-brainer. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I see two, two it's different It's like they're buddy-buddy, and it shows you that we're not far apart on the political spectrum. Right. That, that void between left and right is a artificial void that's put right. there from from birth, it seems, as if you cannot talk to people on the other side. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with those people. Right. There's nothing wrong. We're all Americans. Yeah. We can all talk to each other, and we're going to agree on pretty much everything once we get past all of the stupid things that are stuck in our head about why I can't listen to you. I mean, it goes right. back to that little you know, elementary school experiment with the eye colors. Mm -hmm. You remember that experiment yeah. with the teacher said, okay, blue, blue people, blue eye people are better than brown eye people. Right. And suddenly the kids just split. Mm -hmm. Right. And all of a sudden there was this divide and it's like, if we just got rid of the two sides, it but, would just be, there. you'd realize that there are no two sides. Everyone has a different opinion and different reasons for those opinions. And like the, one of the interesting parts of that is, is she flipped it like pretty soon afterwards and they just switched. Yeah. Right. It wasn't even like, they had, it wasn't like if you told one of them, oh, you're better and you're worse, then like they would be set, right? But if you flip it soon after, they'll just forget that oh. they were better. Well, on that point, let's uh, rate the movie. Just tell people if uh, it's worth them seeing or not. We'll start with Brent. Okay. Um, what do you think, right. Brent, out of five? Now I'm trying to think of what my out ofs is mm. going to be. I forgot about this. Okay. Part. I think I'm going to go three out of five long winded <laughs> anecdotes. <laughs> from Al Gore, <laughs> that didn't seem to fit the movie. Um, I the emotional stuff really worked on me. I really felt there were some really powerful things, like when he was talking to that young man from the Philippines who was there during the typhoon, and mm -hmm. just the horror of that, and just seeing the aftermath of that was really powerful. All that stuff where they were actually showing real life situations that are happening now in our world is like extremely powerful and hard to ignore. But I missed the science part. I felt like there wasn't enough of that, though maybe that wasn't the intent of this movie. And I just worry that, you know, because it's, you know, a sequel to a movie that everyone knows is about climate change, is the, are the right people going to see it? And my concern is probably not. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go with, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do 3.5 out of 5 Al Gore's on the subway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that, you know, the, the idea of the movie was good, and I think, as we talked about this yesterday, where, I, you know, it just seemed like it wasn't as focused as it could have been, right? There was a lot of, you know, because it might have been Al Gore's big campaign movie, um, there was a lot about Al Gore, and, and maybe a more than, than I would like if it was really supposed to be about climate change and about how to make things better. Um, it, there was just a lot of things that was like, oh, I'm Al Gore, and I'm great. And so I think that that really detracts from the, the main idea of the movie, or at least what I wanted the idea of the movie to be, which was, here's what's happening, these are problems, here's what we're going to do to solve them, or here's what you can do to solve them. All right, I'm going to give it three and a half melted flip-flops. Nice. Um, I, there were some powerful scenes in here, things that I hadn't seen. I don't watch CNN 24 hours like some people do, so I hadn't seen scenes of pulling people out of a Louisiana car in yeah. a flood. Mm, that was um, so really seeing that in, you know, in our own country. So if you don't even want to care about the rest of the world, look what's happening in our own country. That was super powerful to me. I also appreciated the fact that we got to see what's happened over the past two years. I think that documentaries are a great way to give us recent history because we don't put pieces together. And the current media just tells you what's going on right now. Um, but something from 2015-16 gives you a little bit of a story of what's been happening in lets you see how that fits. So for that reason, I thought it was really powerful. Um, yes, it was less scientific, overly emotional, but I did feel like, um, yes, it's not going to bring in right-wingers to watch this movie, but those of us who are believing in climate change, I think it gives us some more energy um, so that the, the new generation, the Delaney Reynolds of the worlds, will go out there and make a difference. So I think I'm going to give this movie a bit of a lower score. Um, I think I'm going to give it two out of five soggy socks and the reason i gave it such a low score is because he left out such a vital part of climate change which is the agricultural uh you know effects that that we learned agriculture that we learned in cowspiracy yeah. and, mm -hmm. and after watching those two movies we did a lot of research and it it's just it's been proven time and time again that this is one of the biggest you know effects of climate change and he 
really yeah. glosses over it and, and says... it looks like he could maybe not eat as many hamburgers. Probably. I mean, you could have replaced him with John Goodman, and I would not have noticed the difference. <laughs> That's the thing. You can tell this guy is, like we were talking about this yesterday, is, you know, he's a farmer. He grew up on a farm. Um, he doesn't really want to cut out meat, you can tell. You can just tell. And I think that that is, was really disappointing to me um, as, you know, someone who... Uh, just recently came off of Cowspiracy and uh, What the Health and doing the movie show about it. I just was a little disappointed that he skipped over that fact. And it's such an important fact. You could kind of see the plot devices. You could kind of see the, the agenda. And it was, it just felt like another, I don't know, like another campaign. All right. Well, thank you for watching this episode. If you have some comments, which I'm sure you do, this is a pretty hot topic. Uh, please put them below and let us know. And uh, give us some suggestions. We don't get many suggestions, guys. Mm -hmm. Suggestions mm -hmm. for things that you would like us to review coming up. Uh, so let us know in the doobly-doo below. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. Now you know. Now you know. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what song we're dancing to yet. Is, but, that, uh, is this our funny end? Yeah. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. Yeah. To now you know. Check out our other videos. Yeah, we do have other videos. We have a ton of videos. That's right. We also got t-shirts. If you uh, pledge- How do you get a t-shirt? $15 or more on Patreon, oh, right? that's right. Yeah, you, you get, get a t-shirt and uh, it's pretty cool. It's got our new logo. So uh, yeah. Do we have a video on how to snap? Uh, I don't know how I'm even snapping. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't snap. know how. I think this I just, is the uh, video. I just, doesn't know how to snap. Right does one hand clap. Oh my God, we have to teach. But well, actually, actually, you're doing a five finger, four finger snap there. That's oh, that's, that's kind of how I do it. I like smack my fingers yeah. together. So Brent is the equivalent of eight people snapping. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, so Brent. My hands are getting tired. <laughs> well, I don't know. Superpower. Can we count the cat on Brent's finger? Um, oh yeah, I got my little. I shouldn't. What is that? Cat? <laughs> I shouldn't go too much. He's my middle it's finger. Little blurred band -aid. My little uh, Muppets band aid. Oh, it's Muppets. Yeah. There you go. That's all that was available upstairs. So okay. Well, there you have it, guys. <laughs> now you know.